Hello, this is Bob Dickerson, pastor at the First Baptist Church of Marion, Illinois, and uh, this is our December 5th, 2021, Session 1 lesson from Explore the Bible Studies, uh, produced by the LifeWay Christian Resources. Uh, Of course, I use the Personal Study Guide and the Quick Source Discussion Guide. Uh, Can you believe it's December? I, I I, I know some of you watch this. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, will watch this on YouTube at various times, but uh, we're just now coming into uh, the month of December, and this is our December fifth lesson we're going to be doing, and we're going to be starting a new set of studies this particular uh, uh, Sunday. So uh, uh, we're going to be looking at seven lessons. First of all, from the uh, book of Ezekiel, and then we're going to follow that up with six lessons from the book of Daniel. So uh, I'm looking forward to these, and uh, uh, I hope you are too. Uh, The title of the first lesson is Commissioned, from the text found in Ezekiel, third chapter, verses 8 through 21. And our summary statement is this, God calls people to, to consistently proclaim His truth. I want you to think with me for a moment about all the overwhelming tasks that you've needed to complete complete throughout your uh, uh, life. You may think of uh, the work that you uh, uh, had to do to get certifications or uh, degrees uh, that were required to get you the job or career that you felt that uh, God was leading you to. For some of you ladies, you may be thinking of uh, the months that you were pregnant and and the challenges and the days and the weeks just before childbirth. I remember being with my wife uh, in the uh, labor room uh, during childbirth and in one of her rants in the midst of her uh, pain, uh, she said, I don't want to do this anymore and this is your fault. Well, I may have not been the brightest bulb in the box at that time, but I knew better than to argue with a woman who is uh, uh, in uh, the midst of overwhelming labor pain. I was just hoping that, and maybe even praying, that she wouldn't remember how she felt at that moment and kill me someday while I was sleeping. That prayer, of course, uh, uh, was answered, well, so far. The lesson writer wrote, and I want to give you just a little background as we're beginning uh, the book of Ezekiel. In 597 B.C., during the second siege of Judah, the first siege was around 605 B.C., the Babylonians took exiles from Judah, and Ezekiel was among those seized and was sent with them to Babylon. He, uh, his call did not come until uh, four years after his exile, when he was about 30 years old. We picked that up in Ezekiel 1.1. 1, 1. His ministry lasted from 593 to 571 B.C., and he would spend his entire ministry in Babylon. His messages specifically held Judah responsible for its sins, uh, both as a nation and as individuals. Judah had polluted the temple and defiled the land, and God used Ezekiel to reveal his purpose and plans for the people of Israel. God loved his people but he allowed them to go through this experience to reveal his displeasure over their idolatry and their rebellion. Folks, I I really believe that these messages from Ezekiel uh, are going to be very relevant to our nation today. We we were a nation that was founded on uh, uh, Christian principles. Uh, There have been uh, a motto, in God we trust, that uh, we have... uh, uh, taken to heart sometimes through the years. Um, but I heard in a recent news uh, article that even in our nation today, uh, they just did a poll and it said 60% of the people polled across the nation uh, wanted abortion legalized in the United States. As the majority of people begin to uh, embrace the legality of things that violate God's designs, then we can expect judgment from God. And I could just do a long list of things that uh, are going the wrong direction in our country right now because we are not following the principles and the designs that God has for us to live. And, uh, and the further we get away from God's uh, plans and God's designs, then the closer we are to him bringing us back be- through judgment and make us aware that we need to repent as individuals and as a nation uh, and reconcile with him. 
And the problem with Israel was they did not do that. And if we do not do that, we may see some of the same things that uh, they were encountering. So God calls people to consistently proclaim his truth and then to live accordingly. First point, God provides what believers need to deliver his message. His message, not our message, his message. Ezekiel 3, 8 through 11. Look, I have made your face as hard as their faces and your forehead as hard as their foreheads. I have made your forehead like a diamond, harder than flint. Don't be afraid of them or discouraged by the look on their faces, though they are a rebellious house. Next, he said to me, son of man, listen carefully to all my words that I, that I speak to you and take them to heart. Go to your people, the exiles, and speak to them. Tell them, this is what the Lord God says, whether they listen or refuse to listen. So here's a question for us to ponder on. Why is it sometimes necessary for a leader to be thick-skinned or hard-headed? <laughs> and, and even as I just read, uh, in verse 9, I have made your forehead like a diamond, harder than flint. That's poetic language to describe the uncompromising attitude that Ezekiel would need in order to communi communicate God's message. The lesson writer said it like this, having revealed to Ezekiel that his messages would, would be ignored, the Lord promised to make his prophet an unyielding and hardened as the Israelites. God challenged Ezekiel not to be afraid of the people who rejected the message, but to continue to speak the truth. From experience, I know it is not always easy to share God's message when it is challenging people, uh, the people listening to obey God rather than to do what they want. In our mentoring program, I share with newer believers uh, a session about how to make decisions. And I talk to them about the fact that every decision and every choice that we make shows whether we love God or not. We must see if our decision is going to keep in line with God's will for our lives and whether it will bring us closer to God or distract us from our time with God. I have, I have had to say no to things that I knew that would distract me from what God really wants me to do. I, uh, we say many times, well, I can do whatever I want. And that's true. God allows you to do whatever you want. But it needs to be filtered by what Jesus, our Lord, uh, is telling us to do. When we get saved, we give him the right to be Lord over our lives. If he is not Lord, then not only is our love for him in doubt, our very relationship with him is, at the least, not right. Sometimes it's hard to tell people that. That was the conundrum that Ezekiel was in. He was supposed to share God's message uh, regardless of whether the people listened or not. And that's the same with us today who have been called to share the message of salvation with the world. Many will not listen, but some might. The reason we share is because we love God. He told us to do it. Whether people listen or not does not affect our mission to share. Listen to what God said in the previous verse. Ezekiel 3, 1 through 3. He said to me, Son of man, eat what you find here. Eat this scroll. Then go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he fed me the scroll. Son of man, he said to me, feed your stomach and fill your belly with this scroll I am giving you. So I ate it and it was sweet as honey in my mouth. And of course, that was poetic uh, talk for internalizing and believing the message yourself. That's what he was saying to, for Ezekiel to do. And we as Christians need to do the very same thing. We need to take the message found in the Bible, the message that God's given us, the truths that God has given us, and internalize it and believe it ourselves. And then we are to preach it, whether those we are preaching to are list, will listen to it or not. Be, and he basically was saying to Ezekiel, and he's saying to us today, that these words are going to last much longer than the people listening to them is going to last. Ezekiel 3, 7 says, but the house of Israel will not want to listen to you because they do not want to listen to me. For the whole house of Israel is hard-headed and hard-hearted, we see in verse 7. So this is the preparatory verses for what we're studying today. Wow. Have you ever known somebody hard-headed and hard-hearted? Have you ever been somebody hard-headed and hard-hearted? Uh, Please don't wear those words with pride because God didn't mean them as a good thing. 
And it's nothing to brag about because God's people uh, need to listen to God's instruction. But the Israelites at this time, they did not listen and they showed no remorse for their rebellion. So here's our application. We have been provided the truth to believe and proclaim. God is always first and foremost concerned with our relationship with him. And if it goes sideways, he wants us to be reconciled to him. Even judgment has this purpose of bringing us back to God. God is good, a good, good father. He is willing to exact discipline to bring us back because his will is always best. You know, this idea of, oh, I love my child too much to discipline him. No, you don't love your child the way you ought to love your child (laughs) if you're not exacting the discipline that they need. We have access to what is right for living it and proclaiming it. The application is to live the truth and to proclaim the truth. Our second point is this. The weight of carrying God's message of judgment against sin can be overwhelming, but it must be carried nevertheless. Ezekiel 3, 12 through 15, the spirit then lifted me up and I heard a loud rumbling sound behind me. Bless the glory of the Lord in his place with the sound of the living creatures wings brushing against each other and the sound of the wheels beside them. A loud rumbling sound. The spirit lifted me up and took me away. I left in bitterness and in an angry spirit and the Lord's hand was on me powerfully. I came to the exiles at Tel Aviv. Uh, who were living by the Tabar Canal, and I sat there among them, stunned for seven days. So there were, uh, think about the range of emotions that Ezekiel experienced in these verses. At first, uh, he burst into praising God for his glory. The Spirit then lifted me up, uh, and, and I heard a loud rumbling sound behind me, bless the glory of the Lord in this place. He was praising God, but then Ezekiel was grief-stricken. He was bitter, angry, and stunned over the people's uh, sin. Uh, As I read just a moment ago, uh, I left in bitterness and an angry spirit, and the Lord's hand was on me powerfully. So how do these two emotions relate? Well, we never really understand the horrific nature of sin until we contrast it with the truth about the holiness of God. We go back to Isaiah, and we think about... uh, uh, what he said, he uh, come into the presence of God and, and, the, uh, and the elders were singing, or the angels were singing, and one called to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundation of the doorway shook at the sound of their voices and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, being Isaiah, woe is me for I am ruined because I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. And because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies. So he was understanding the holiness of God. Let's face reality. The more we are willing to tolerate sin, the further away we are from the truth and understanding about the holiness of God. Isaiah taught us that reconciliation happens when we realize and understand the holiness of God and ask forgiveness to turn away from the sin to serving him. Isaiah 6, 6 through 8 is, is uh, uh, what happened to Isaiah. Then one of the seraphim uh, flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, now that This has touched your lips. Your iniquity is removed and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord asking, who will I send? Who will go for us? I said, here am I, send me. So the application for us is to do the same thing Isaiah did. Realize, realize that God is holy and we are not. And we need to repent of our sins and ask forgiveness of our sins and be cleansed uh, by the power of the uh, blood of Jesus Christ and come into right relationship with God. So we must turn from our sin, proclaim the truth, and God will be with us. It stuns us when we understand the holiness of God in comparison uh, to the way that so many of us rebel and embrace the sin that God abhors. Ezekiel could, I'm sorry, Ezekiel could physically hear God's activity all around him. He felt the hand of the Lord on him. I understand that. Sometimes after preaching uh, the truth, uh, I feel the burden of a, of a lack of response to God's message. And 
And honestly, I used to always think uh, if I'd only been better, if I'd only preached better, if I'd only studied harder, um, if I could communicate better, uh, maybe we would have had the response that, uh, that I'm sure God was wanting. But, you know, that's more Satan talking to me because I am who God created me to be. And anything good that I do or say, it's all about what he's doing through me. I'm human and frail and, and uh, uh, I have to rely on him. It's not about me. It's not about what I can do. It's about God's truth and, and what I agree with him to do through me. Sometimes I happen to know that there is uh, someone out there who needs to make a decision and, and be in agreement with God, but they are so scared to step out. And I get that. I'm scared as well. What I say goes out far beyond the people that I, that I, I see some days. I remember one of the hardest people that I was called to go and share the gospel truth out turned out to be one of the easiest people that was ever led uh, to Christ that I ever spoke to. The weight of carrying God's message of judgment against sin can be overwhelming, but it must be carried out. Not just by me, but all of you that can hear my voice today. We need to take on the mission of Christ. And that brings us to the last and final point. God expects believers to share the gospel with those that they encounter. Listen to the end of this uh, passage, uh, 16 through 21, Ezekiel 3. Now at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. When you hear a word from my mouth, give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked person, you will surely die, but you do not warn him, you don't speak out to warn him about his wicked way in order to save his life, that wicked per person will die for his iniquity, yet I will hold you responsible for his blood. But if you warn a wicked person and he does not turn from his wickedness or his wicked way, he will die for his iniquity, but you will have rescued yourself. Now, if a righteous person turns from his righteousness and acts unjustly, and I put a stumbling block in front of him, he will die. If you did not warn him, he will die because of his sin and the righteous acts he did will not be remembered. Yet I will hold you responsible for his blood. But if you warn the righteous person that he should not sin and he does not sin, he will indeed live because he listened to your warning and you will have rescued yourself. So God called Ezekiel a watchman. What did he expect of Ezekiel? A watchman was typically stationed at a high tower on a city wall, and his job was to watch for approaching uh, uh, messengers or enemies. He was expected to be alert and awake because the fate of the city was in his hands. As a watchman, Ezekiel couldn't share God's message only when it was convenient or when, there, or, or when he was having a good reception, for he would be held personally responsible for the impending danger throughout history. A sentry who fell asleep on duty would be severely punished, sometimes even with the death penalty. So how can these verses motivate us to be faithful to the warnings of Scripture? Well, God was going to hold Ezekiel accountable if he failed to deliver the warnings to Israel that he was supposed to. There wasn't much difference between the righteous and the wicked in these verses, and Ezekiel was responsible for warning them both. They both had the opportunity to be saved if they needed the warning, and they both faced destruction if they ignored it. So our application today, we will be held accountable for how serious we took our mission. Uh, you all know the Great Commission. Uh, I talk about it all the time and, and teach it in our mentoring program. But let me remind you of what it says. In verse 18, Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So in this passage, we get our mission. If we are not involved in that mission in some way, form, or fashion according to our giftedness, then we got a problem. Our Lord has given us a direct command, and we either obey it or we don't. And so I'm telling you, I know you may be hard for your ears to hear, but you need to seek out God's provision for you to accomplish his mission. You will, like Ezekiel, be held accountable for whether you did or did not do what God has called you to do. And if you are not thinking in those terms or you have, have not done that for so long in your lives, then, uh, then this may be a problem. 
spiritually in your life. Better check your spiritual pulse because this is what God's called us to do. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said, teach them to observe everything he's commanded us. And he said, if you do those things, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. This is my mission. I will be with you to accomplish my mission through you. This coming uh, uh, week, by the time you uh, see this, probably uh, uh, it will already be done. But uh, uh, I'm going to be doing the, the funeral of a dear person in our church, 100 years old, uh, Miss Pearl. And uh, she told me a story one time I want to end with today. Uh, she had told me that uh, she had been at one point in her life afraid of telling others about Jesus. And for those of us that know Miss Pearl uh, in uh, the latter stages of, of her life over the last couple of decades, we would never believe that because, I mean, she was outspoken and she was always ready to pray for somebody or tell somebody about Jesus. Uh, but uh, at that time, in her younger years, she was a little bit afraid. She was afraid she didn't know enough. She was afraid she might mess it up somehow. And, and uh, uh, she just didn't want to do it. Well, uh, that leads me to the story she told me. There was a person in her life that uh, uh, she had heard the news that they got a, a terminal prognosis, that, that they were going to die uh, soon. And she felt the overwhelming urge to tell him about Jesus. She was afraid that he was lost, and 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 she was, uh, she just was overcome with with the desire, with the uh, with the the want to to go tell them. But she was afraid, like so many of us, afraid to open our mouths and tell the most important story of all times. She prayed about it again, and 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 again, God spoke to her. Go talk to him. And so she gathered up all the courage she had, and she asked for God's help, and she went to, uh, to talk to him. And she, when she got there, she told him, she says, you know, I've come here to talk to you about, about Christ. Are you ready uh, for death? And he looked at her and smiled, and he said, Pearl, I knew you would come and show me the way. I had prayed to the Lord and asked him for help. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who would come, but when you walked in the door, I knew it was you, and I just knew you would come. And Pearl shared her faith uh, with this man, and right on the spot, he prayed to receive Christ. And she said it was one of the most satisfying things that she'd ever done in her life. And he died just a few days later, and she said to me, Pastor, what if I had let fear overcome me? What if I had not gone to tell him about Jesus? What would have happened? Not only would I have been held accountable, but he might have gone to hell. And she said, I made the decision right then and there that I was not going to be quiet about Jesus ever again. I was not going to let de the devil make me afraid. I was going to let God, I was going to trust God to speak through me even in my fearful moments, because it was well worth it to see this person in her life be saved. What's our personal challenge this week? Maybe this lesson is telling us to pray for, to be a little more thick-skinned and, and hard-headed about, about uh, uh, overcoming our fear and proclaiming the message of Christ. Like Ezekiel, we need to be faithful to share the gospel no matter the response. Let's pray together today and commit ourselves to personally share our faith with at least one person this month. Maybe, like Miss Pearl, obeying God in this will change our lives to answer God's call to consistently proclaim his truth to everyone that comes into our lives. Let's pray. Father, I pray that during this uh, December time, this Christmas season, that you will empower us to share our faith in the means by which you've given us to do it. Lord, there's people out there that need Jesus, people that you're going to intersect our paths with. I pray, Father, that everyone that can hear my voice and is watching this will just ask for your help to share with at least one person this season so that many will be saved. And Lord, we know that they will be blessed, but, but Lord, I know from a personal experience that we'll be blessed too. So let this be the merriest 
of all Christmases, Lord, as we share our faith, as you've called us to do, to show our love for you, to show our love for others, and to live like Jesus did when he came here to rescue us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.